Trading Places Connection? Check. Lots of random cameos? Check. This is my review for Coming to America and Coming to America 2. A. B. N. It's headphones sale! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my next review for a couple of films I recently watched and one that was just released to Amazon Prime on March 5th. So as the intro suggests and um, if you read the title you already said this, but I um, recently rewatched Coming to America, the 4K UHD version on Amazon Prime and I followed that up with the sequel Coming to America with the two from the first title replaced with the number two so i wanted to watch the first one um or rewatch the first one just to see if i missed anything see if there's anything in the original film versus the tv version and generally just refresh my memory for what happened in the film who we saw in the film and all that good stuff before going into the second one to kind of see how all of that fell into place so overall the first one first film um as the original one from back in the day um still holds up as a good film funny um you relate to prince akeem um to semi um the parents and basically everyone in the film and on rewatching the film it's one of those scenes where you realize and one thing i probably knew when i watched it on tv but um, noticed this time around as well was how many characters eddie murphy actually played in the film so Overall, I think he did a pretty good job. The film, for me, still holds up as a piece in the, or as a film that takes place in the 80s. Um, things that you know don't really hold up are things like the stereo and 8-track, the cars, um, no cell phones, and no internet, and things like that. So overall, it does become a period piece, but because it's so well done, it kind of feels a good film in its place, but you're not really taken out of anything like that um one of the other things that i found particularly intriguing and funny was that we have samuel jackson in the film which i don't remember at all but probably brand at the time i didn't really know him or visually know him i think it was right i might have been when i saw trading places i don't think i had seen the usual or not the usual suspects but um the tarantino film that now i'm drawing a blank on that's really good but um I don't know that I probably really it's probably still early on in his career so it's probably one of those things where you wouldn't really recognize him but when you see the film now um, you he definitely stands out um, the other thing that I found particularly of a good note in places this um, coming to America after trading places is the trading places connection so when Prince Akeem and Lisa are walking on the riverfront um, Prince Akeem gives a dollar to a couple of um, homeless guys who turn out to be the Duke brothers and um, so that pretty much sets them up on um, recovering their wealth and firm and all of that stuff and becoming rich again. So I found that particularly um, interesting and fun and funny. Um, and it definitely places coming to America after Trading Places because if you've seen Trading Places and you know by the end of the film Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd um, become the rich ones and the Duke brothers lose all their wealth and money and fall out of favor and all of that stuff. Um, when watching the film though, the one thing that I did um, think about while watching the film was Daryl from uh, Lisa's boyfriend and the lead singer of Sexual Chocolate looked a lot like a knockoff of Charlie Murphy um, in his role from The Chappelle Show. So when you're watching it, he's supposed to be that rich playboy kind of character who's not really all that smart, doesn't really know what's going on and all of that stuff. So um, overall, his character was decent. It worked for the course of the uh, film. And um, that's kind of the role that I felt like he fell into while watching it now especially um when going into the sequel for the film um and then 
it's, I can't re- talk about the film with, of course, mentioning James Earl Jones, the voice of Darth Vader. So I got to thinking while watching the film that if you have James Earl Jones in, Jones in your film and it's after Star Wars, why not have him do some sort of nod to Star Wars? And they actually did have that scene when he, um, he does show up at McDowell's, I think, believe for the first time, and he's asking um, Lisa's father to let him know when uh, Prince Akeem shows up. And he says, basically in a Vader-ish voice, that when when you see him, ha- notify me at once. And it was very reminiscent of Vader telling one of the Imperial Navy guys um, to stay aware and let alert him of his presence. And basically as if he's giving orders. So I thought, while probably not intentional, it felt like it was a, a good, random, subtle nod to Star Wars that you have James Earl Jones in your film. So why not use the voice? Um, and of course, I left this um, part to the end. But the one thing you I noticed when watching the Amazon Prime version, or at least a full version of the film, is a scene that they don't show, or I don't remember them showing on the TV version. And that's in the beginning of the film when um, Akeem is getting his um, bath with the royal servants. And basically, you start off the film with some... Um, top or above the waist nudity from the prince and the um, servants and you do get a most likely intentional uh, blue joke so while it was we're, we're, well, as an adult it is funny and as a kid you I can see why they would of course it's not going to be in a TV version and um they probably now would do something like where they, they would digitally insert, you know, probably make him wear, be wearing bathing suits or something. Maybe redo the joke to say that the royal body is washed and replace body with um, a dirty joke. But you kind of see why they would not um, have that in the TV version and why it probably wouldn't stick out as a child or as a kid. Um, if I was probably old enough, uh, maybe in the teenagers, if I saw it as an uncensored version, it would get a um, immature chuckle out of me. But um, th- when watching the film, that's the one thing that stands out. So definitely not something you want to watch with the kids, or because it does not necessarily take away from the film. If you skip over the first, you know, few minutes of the film, it's okay to skip because you do get that whole royalty life of Akeem after that, especially with the um, rose petals at his feet, um, living in the palace, the wealth, uh, Semi's um, reliance on money and all of that stuff. So things like that definitely stand out when you're watching the introduction to get an idea of Akeem's life. So definitely not something you'll miss, but as an adult watching it with friends, um, it is a chuckle to watch so that leads us directly into coming to america too so with the first film you do have of course i'm eddie murphy arsenio hall james earl jones um um samuel jackson so with the second film the one thing that stands out is all the people who are in the film making cameo appearances so by about 20 minutes in you begin to wonder who's not in the film so you have people like morgan freeman doing the a voiceover for James Earl Jones's um, funeral ceremony uh, in Vogue and Salt and Peppa doing their, and also Gladys Knight doing their singing cameos. You have Leslie Jones as Prince Akeem's son's mom, so her role is particularly funny. I like that. You have Tracy Morgan as Akeem's son's uncle. Um, so overall, and so basically aside from the people you have from the first film, except for Samuel Jackson, which I didn't see that he was in there, so I'm not sure if they couldn't get him, he didn't want to do it, or maybe I missed it, but aside from him, um, you have all these other people making starring appearances in the film, so you begin to wonder who's not going to be in the film. Um, so that leads me into probably the, my favorite character in the sequel, and that's Wesley Snipes. So that was, and he's probably my favorite character just because I think now from this film, and I mean aside, and probably from a few other roles, but he should always play the evil general or dictator, just because he seems to pull that off very well. He um, plays. Um, 
the uh, powerful leader with a slight um, insane and evil complex to it. He has that look and talk about him that where he can pull that off. So I think he should always pull off things like that just because it seems like um, he can get into that character very well. Um, and of course you couldn't have this character or a coming to America film without some random funny stuff in it. So in this case, uh, so in the first film, McDowell's was the funny um, running gag in the film. So you have, you know, um, Lisa's father explaining why his, McDowell's is not a knockoff of McDonald's, but further then or then thereby explaining why how everything is a knockoff of mcdonald's so in this film we have um the rival or the neighboring nation of nexdoria of which wesley snipes is a is the leader so um i thought that was of particular note i continued hearing that name in the film just as a, a i mean basically when you start the film you originally think it's going to or you would imagine that it's going to take a slightly more serious tone, but as soon as they introduce Nexdoria and you have Wesley Snipes playing the general leader of the um, nation, it falls into place just how silly it's going to be. Um, you have McDowell's opening up in Zamunda and having a continued explanation of how the Mc... I think they called it the McFlurby or something like that? Or McFlurby, something like that. I forget what they call the milkshake and how it's not a knockoff of the McFlurry, so overall all of that stuff fell into place um and then of course you couldn't have the film without another um trading places connection so in this case we have when uh, akim's son is going for a job interview uh it turns out that the guy who's interviewing him is i want to say the son or grandson some relative of the duke brothers so um we have a subtle nod to them i didn't actually go in to see if the actors who play them are no longer or who are if they passed away or anything like that but they have a nod that to that the firm was founded based on them so we see that the duke brothers were able to set up a new company from that dollar that akeem gave them so a uh, nice nod there. Um, and then I liked it when Akeem was talking to the barbershop or the um, hairdresser lady that she wants to start her own barbershop and they have that conversation about um, barbershop and beauty shop, um, the Ice tea and Queen Latifah films. So overall, nice little nods there. So it would have been an uh, interesting thing to, to see there. And on a related note, um, the one the barbershop guys from the first film are do show up in this film as well, and it doesn't look like they aged a bit. So it feels like even though it's been about I want to say maybe 19 or 20 years, I forget how old Akeem's son is, but it looks like in those 20 years those guys have not aged a bit. So they went from maybe old in the first film to slightly older in the second film. So um, I wasn't. I mean, it was okay to have that. I mean, it's a comedy film, so you don't really expect too much. But it was good to see those guys in the film. So I'm glad that we were able to see them. Um, and as far as the final ca um, cameo performance, which I was not told, was I, which I totally didn't expect. And I, of course, I didn't read the um, cast list to see this. But we have Trevor Noah showing up as the anchor of the of ZNN um, in the film so that's the Zambuna news network so I that actually made me crack up laughing because of course Trevor is from South Africa or Africa I forget if he's from South Africa or somewhere else but playing the host of ZNN not having to actually fake an accent but being a news anchor like he is on the daily show generally just worked and then the get up was that he had with the facial hair and all of that all in all made for a very funny scene so if, if nothing else i definitely recommend watching the film for that so that all fell into place and then of course um i was by the end of the film or by this time or by probably three quarters of the film i was beginning to wonder if we're going to even see um daryl or sexual chocolate or anything like that but then of course it's we're not really expecting it because um but because Lisa married Akeem, you don't really have a reason for him to be there. But um, because they have um, Akeem's son's wedding to the hair stylist, they need a, a wedding singer. And of course, they bring out sexual chocolate and they bring out bring in Peaches, one of the sister group that um, Akeem and 
Sammy first met in the uh, when they were in Queens looking for um, a smart, intelligent woman for Akeem. So seeing both of them rounded out that whole cameo appearance by them. So overall, uh, watching um, the f both films back to back made me appreciate the first film more, or appreciate the first film, but then also made me enjoy the second film that much more because of all the stuff that they tied to in the first film, um, stayed true to in the universe, made fun of, uh, was funny, and generally just made for a more enjoyable film. So um, I definitely recommend watching Coming to America 2, but watch it in the context of having rewatched the first film first. So um, definitely recap that the coming to america and then watch the sequel and i want to say that i will 95 percent guarantee that you will enjoy the second film if you enjoyed the first film so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback of your own or anything like that you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is patel n01.com for past episodes subscription links supporting the show and all of that good stuff and of course by supporting the show you get uh, bonus content early access to upcoming episodes and reviews and what's coming um, down the pipeline for the podcast and of course if you are a patron you get for, ex for example in this case I did a hot take for um, the Coming to America films and WandaVision season 1 so you get an early listen to what's coming up on the reviews and of course that's on Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel in 01 but that's all there is for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time